Hi again, in this video we're going to cover testing again, uh, the total system test, uh, before, possibly before, if your jurisdiction permits, before you get the permit for permission to operate, what testing can you do? Can you test the panels? And we're going to discuss some of these ideas here. And this pertains to an in-phase system, so an in-phase grid-tied um, microinverter system. So if you have other systems, it uh, doesn't address this. So stand by. Video maybe about 15 or 20 on my grid tied system. I don't use batteries and uh, I'm just exploring how we could do a system test if it was legal in our jurisdiction. So what we're going to be talking about is hooking our panels and microinverters to the grid without feeding back into the grid. So we're going to be self-consuming some power as well as getting some power from the grid. And in some jurisdictions I believe that this is permitted, but it is never permitted to feed back into the grid without a permission to operate. And of course, we're going to pull a permit before we do the work. And some jurisdictions don't want to or care about inspecting in at intermediary points along the way. They just say put your panels up on the roof, we'll come out and we'll look at you and we'll give you a permit and then with that permit you get a permission to operate from the utilities. However, it would be nice to be able to do some preliminary system testing for a short period of time just to prove all our wiring are, is good and that we have a, um, a rate of output that is what we expect. So that, that's what I'm going to be discussing in this video. Many inverters from Amazon already plug into your wall outlets and allow you to self-consume output. Um, it's not clear whether these are, you know, legal NEC certified systems, but there are several of those systems out there. What we're talking about is an N-phase uh, system that is UL approved and that we are going to get a permit shortly. And we're just talking about doing a system test prior to uh, the inspector coming out. So anyway, that's the framework for this video, and uh, hopefully it is permitted in your jurisdiction and you will benefit from this. Thank you. In general, we're going to have some sort of reading on our meter that's going to tell us um, how much consumption we're using. So we'll get a pretty good idea of what the baseline consumption is uh, of our, um, all of our loads in our house. I've got a clamp meter here, which I like. It's this H. T208, Kowitz and Habotest makes the same model number on this. And technically we could, on these black wires there, we could put a meter around them and read what the, um, what our loads are before, you know, just so we know. But unfortunately it's too tight in there to fit this meter, so I'm just going to have to use the um, instead of using this clamp meter I'm gonna have to use this meter here to tell me about how much load I'm consuming however I can use the clamp meter to read the output from the panels on each leg so I've got um, a black and a red line one line two off an in phase unit and here's uh, the first one, 546. And then I'm going to put the clamp on the second one here. And I'm, 
I'm five two two. So you have to go onto the amps, the AC scale here, and um, you can read the amps. So in my setup here, I'm coming from the roof, and I've got this breaker turned on at this at this point. So I'm reading the output. So I think all we have to do is make sure that our loads over here are greater than what we're supplying. And we could do that a few different ways. We could have blankets on our solar panels. Our solar panels are up there on the roof. But we could put some blankets on our solar panels. We could um, just turn a f one solar panel on at a time. We could, we could uh, minimize the amount of output we have here in relation to ship to our loads over here. We could also make these loads higher over here. So what would that allow us to do? Well, for sure, we could turn this breaker on, which I didn't, which some jurisdictions don't let you do. Uh, we could turn this on. We could see what our expected output is because we could measure this, this output right here. Uh, we could um, program this envoy here. Um, so it has to be in communication with um, a Wi-Fi network and also be in communication with um, the panels. So why won't this work if we uh, don't turn on utility power? So utility power here is turned on here and it provides a signal. Uh, to the panels and then the panels know how to sync um, the, um, the the Hertz the uh, waves the AC signals and also uh, what voltage to deliver so ideally we could probably test if these loads were greater than the, the um, amount we're supplying over here and we wouldn't risk feeding electricity from this meter across this line to the um, to the power company because we would be consuming everything that the panels would be providing and in addition to that we would also be getting pan electricity from the power line through the meter all we would be doing is um, be supplementing our power output. So there's uh, some reasons that we could benefit from this should the local jurisdictions allow it. Um, and then, so what you have to be is ultra conservative that you're not going to be, uh, you know, consuming less power than what you're producing over here. So in order to read the meter and figure out how many watts, kilowatts, we're generating, we're going to need to know what our voltage is. So you just put the probe across line one and two and read the voltage. In my case, it's uh, 238 volts. Uh, so what you're going to want to do is make sure that you've got the function and you've got AC voltage on the meter. Um, and then what you're going to do is multiply. We had, um, we had 5 amps on this side and 5 amps on this side, right? Um, so we had uh, roughly um, 5 amps on each leg times... Um, so 5 amps on each leg times um, 200 and say 40 volts. So 5 times 240 is, is how many watts that we, that we are generating. And so um, this meter reads in kilowatt hours. And so 
on your meter everything's going to be different but there's a kilowatt hour meeting meter that's going to flash okay and and it's something like this 0.43 uh, kilowatt hours and um, that would be um, 430 watts of power in this case 0.43 is 430 watts so we'd know we'd need to make sure that our panels um, we're going to supply less than 430 watts. So what we're going to talk about here is we're going to look at our meter first without the solar connected and we're going to turn on loads that are fairly high loads, heater, washer, dryer, and other. And then we're going to be able to read the kilowatt hours from the meter. And we're going to be able to figure out then how much load that we're going to have roughly and we're going to want to make sure that we tune our solar panels to output less than what the load is that we can read off the meter but some of the tools that we can do, use to tune ourselves is we can maybe do it on a cloudy day we can um, maybe at a time of day you when know, we do it at five o'clock when the you know at sunset or something like that we could cook we could put blankets on the panels if we wanted to or beach towels and then what we're gonna do is once we uh, turn on the solar and connect the solar with the grid we're gonna take our clamp meter and monitor the solar output to make sure that we're measuring less in solar output than than what this um, what the meter is indicating so we would still be able to look at the meter then and we would be able to see a, a far diminished amount of um, electricity coming from the grid because we would be supplementing the loads with our panels but we would still make sure that we have the meter um, going forward again the meters don't really go backwards most of the smart meters don't um, they um, because they're not they're not programmed to do that. They're programmed to take from the grid. And so um, a lot of meters don't go backwards until you've actually got your permission to operate. So here's a rough, um, you know, a rough calculation here where let's say, for instance, here's the grid and here's our meter and we're, we're getting roughly um, two kilowatts. It's, it reads 2.0. So we, we basically say, okay, 2.0 kilowatts is 2,000 watts divided by 240 volts is um, 8.3 amps. So we would expect if we put a clamp meter um, on and measured the output from the panel, we would want to make sure that, you know, we were... Uh, if we were monitoring, we'd want to see how much was coming off those panel was coming off the panel. We would expect that we need to be uh, far less than 8.3 amps on, in output, and we could tune our panels with blankets or time of day or something to ensure that we're less than 8.3 amps on the clamp meter. So here's an example of something else we can do. We uh, set up our envoy, and then. We set up the Wi-Fi for that, and then we can uh, read um, whether we have good signal strength and making sure we communicate with all our panels and then all our panels are producing power. And um, it's kind of nice to be able to test this Envoy system as soon as you can because, you know, if something's not connected right, you might have to pull the panels off the roof so this is a pretty good uh, check and I uh, hope that this has benefited you in some way and I'm glad to be part of your project I know a lot of you are following along with my videos on uh, your projects and it uh, gives me a lot of satisfaction that some of you all are helped by these and I wish you a lot of luck on your projects and uh, if you hit like on this I'd, I'd appreciate it just to give me motivation to do more videos.